always, always on the road. All right, guys, welcome back to another lesson in whole numbers. Let's get started here. So if I was to find out the factors of six, I would say they're one, two, three, and six. And we say a number is perfect when all its factors, other than the number itself being six, add up to the exact number. And I'll just give you a little example here. So one plus two plus three equals six. And so they call that a perfect number. So let's say there's 50 people playing bocce. I don't know if you've played bocce before, I kind of like it, but uh, they're playing bocce in Central Park in New York. Is 50 a perfect number? Explain how you know. So I'm gonna let you pause it there for a sec, try and figure out the factors of 50, see if they add up to 50 to indicate that it is a perfect number or not. Okay, how about this? How many students are in your class? Is it a perfect number? And if not, how many more or fewer stu students would you need to make it a perfect number? I'll let you pause and do that for a sec. Okay guys, so today we're gonna talk about something called factors and we, br we touched on it briefly in the last lesson, but um, we, can, we can use factors to find out what ha numbers have in common. So when we find the same factors for two numbers or more, we are finding common factors. So I can show the factors of 9 and 15 in a Venn diagram. And so if I was to list out the factors of 9, 1, 3, and 9, and the factors of 15 are 1, 3, 5, and 15. And so um, here's my little Venn diagram here. And you can see that the greatest common factor is 3. And when I say greatest, I'm talking about the largest. So um, on this side here, we have the factors of 9. And on this side here, we have the factors of 15. However, they overlap with the one and three. Now one is not as large as three, so we can say the greatest common factor is three in this situation. So what are the fact, what is the greatest common factor of 18 and 48? I'm gonna let you pause it here for a sec. I want you to see if you can figure out what is the greatest common factor of 18 and 48. Well, the first thing I need to do when I start here is I need to say, well, this side, let's call this is the 18 factor side, and this is the 48 factor side. And it might help if I listed out the factors of 18 and 48. So uh, I like to do it like this. I like to say 18 equals, and I kind of go through here. Well, I know one and 18 go together. I know this is an even number, so I know that two can work. And well, two times what is 18? Well, that's nine. I kind of like to go bookends here. Uh, I know three will work because I can go 18 divided by three is six. Now, is there four gonna work? 18 divided by four does not work. Five is not gonna work. And well, I'm already back up to six. So I can say the factors are one, two, three, six, nine, and 18. What about 48? Well, again, I know that one and 48, let's go over, put it over here, will work. And I know that two being an even number will work. And 48 divided by two is 24. I can try and figure out, well, 48 divided by three, I think that is 16. And 48 divided by four is 12. I've run out of room here but uh, five is not gonna work because it is an n and a five or a zero, but six will work, six and eight will work. So I should put commas in between all these. Okay, so let's see. Do they both have some things in common? Yes, they do. They have one in common, so I can put one in the middle here. That's in common. They have two in common. They have three in common. Now they don't have four or six in common, eight, 12, oh no, they do have six, sorry. Six is there, you can see it right there. And I think that is it. So I can put four is for 48, and eight is for 48, and 16, 24, and 48. It's got a few numbers on that side. And on this side, we had nine, and 18. Now, what is the greatest common factor of 18 and 48? Well, let's look in this middle area here. Which one is the largest? Six. 
So we can say that GCF, or greatest common factor, of 18 and 48 is 6. Now, sometimes people like to call the method I use to draw out these factors a rainbow method, and I can uh, kind of show you here. That's saying we can make a rainbow out of all the factors in the, the number. Does that kind of look like a rainbow? I know it's a black a black rainbow. It's not very rainbow-ish, but you can see that it's going in that kind of arc that a rainbow does. All right. Now, just one last task here. We can find factors of a number that are prime. Just trying to find out what are all the prime numbers that equal a number, and we could do that by doing something called a factor tree. And so I put 45 there at the top, and I'm going to use a black pen here, and we can draw out different parts here. Now we can multiply different numbers to make 45. I think the easiest one in this situation is probably 5 and 9 because 5 times 9 equals 45. If you have a different number that can multiply different ways it doesn't matter actually which ones you choose as long as the two numbers equal 45. Now is 5 going to move any further? You know, it's 5 and 1. 1 is not actually a, a prime number, and we'll talk about that in a sec, but um, 5 is its own prime number. Okay, so let's move on to the 9. 9 can be broken down into a 3 and a 3. Now, 3 is a prime number, so what we can say here is 5 times 3 times 3 is the prime factors of 45, and we should probably check that out. So here's the calculator, 5 times 3 times 3 equals 45. So that worked there. Okay, now how about you try this? What are, what are all the prime factors of 85 using a factor tree? Now don't be afraid to use a calculator. I'm going to let you pause it here, draw out that 85 factor tree and see what we can figure out. Okay, so Right off the bat, I mean, I don't know all the factors of 85. I could use a calculator, but I do know it ends in a five. And so I'm gonna guess that I could probably draw out a five here, okay? Well, what is 85 divided by five? 85 divided by five is 17. Well, this wasn't a very good example, Mr. Hardy, because 17 is a prime factor. So five times 17, is 85. That was a little boring. Okay, so let's try a different one. How about 90? Just move up a little bit. Well, I know that 9 and 10 multiply to 90. Now, is 9 and 10 prime numbers? No, they're not. So I can say, well, we did this before. 3 and 3 are 9. And what's going to multiply into 10 here is, well, 2 and 5. Now let's see if these all multiply together. So if I go like this, will it equal 90? Those are all prime numbers, so I'm going to clear this out. 3 times 3 times 2 times 5 equals 90. So that is how you can make a factor tree showing all the prime factors of 85. Now I said we should talk about why is 1 not a prime number. Now let's say I again want to find out all the factors of 9. Well it's 1, 3, and 9. Now we declared that a prime number is a number that has two factors in it, 1 and itself. Okay, now I chose 9 here because we have this 3 here. Now, why is 3 there? Because 3 times 3 is 9. Now, I didn't write two 3s because only 3 will work. Okay, well, how about 1? What equals 1? Well, 1, and I could times 1. However, I already have 1, 1 here. It's just like we had the 1, 3. I can't do, I can't do this. Let me cross, scribble that out. I can only have just one number. However, a prime number needs to have one and itself, being two factors. Okay, so this is why that number one actually is neither a prime number nor is it a composite number. Okay, that's it for today. Take care.